Hello everyone and welcome back to Lynn. Uh, this is going to be e either the last episode or one more. And we're going right back into where we left off with uh, with Lynn with an E inside the dream world. No, oh, I don't know. No, no. Okay. She isn't tall, girls. Her presence is entirely average and unposing. She's the polar opposite of the woman. She reminds me of Fawn. She's around my height. She's similar face too. The same cheeks, the same nose, the same mouth. Even the same nostrils, but her leg isn't broken. She walks slowly without a limp, like she is all the time in the world. Her ir her irises are brown like mine, but then they seem to stretch on forever and ever into infinity. I can be sucked up by her steady, steely gaze, like water down in a drain. I know this girl. I know her only too well. She's there all the time, whenever I'm asleep or awake. I can't es escape from her. I can never escape. Give our guest a helping hand, dear. You know what to do. Lynn nods soundlessly and kneels down beside me. A woman who looks like Vaughn shuffles away, giving Lynn more space to perform whatever cruel ceremony she's supposed to conduct. Lynn reaches forward. She takes hold of my, both my cheeks and my head. Her palms are so cold I shiver. Is she even alive? Her skin's so pale I'm beginning to wonder if there's any blood inside her. Maybe she doesn't have any blood but ice. That would explain why she's so cold to the touch. My heart is so glacial like, is a glacial lake, completely frozen over. I want to ask her why. Why are you doing this to me? Do you really hate me this much? Why do you hate me? How dare you hate me? How can you stand to make me suffer when I want to make you suffer much, much more? But I can't say any of those things. My throat is swollen, no sounds come out. Lynn parts her lips slowly. She sighs. Her sweet breath ruffles in my fringe. There's something small and white, shaped like a pearl resting on her tongue. On the tip of her tongue. It looks like some kind of tablet. Medicine? But I don't have enough time to wonder. Lynn's fingers dig into my cheek and a little tighter, hard enough to hurt, her nails raking against my unprotected flesh. And she dips her head, her lips pressing against mine. I'm so surprised my eyes snap open wide, so do my lips. She slides her tongue inside my mouth, coiling it about mine and deposits a strange alien pill inside me. Again, what what is with this game? It tastes strange. Everything here is strange. My head swims, my whole body hurts. It isn't just my leg. I feel like I'm being torn apart. I'm being stabbed with shards of glass over and over again. I whimper into Lynn's kiss. I don't want to swallow the tablet. I don't know what the strange medicine is, but I know can't swallow it. I won't. When Lynn doesn't draw her, her mouth away from mine, her mouth is warm, cavern filled with sticky saliva. She's consuming me, devouring me. I choke. Lynn shoves her tongue even deeper into my. I find myself swallowing despite myself. A small tablet slides down my throat. Tears bead in the corners of my eyes. A piercing sensation threatens to split my body into two. It feels like I'm being ripped apart. I feel like I'm not even myself anymore. Was I ever myself to begin with? Maybe there's no girl called Lynn. The whole time, I was just a copy. A fake. I can't breathe, I can't take it, I can't take. All I can do is hurt. The crowd around me starts buzzing excitedly. Lynn observes a few moments before she draws away. It's like she can't bear to touch me. I can smell something in the air. A smoky, acrid smell. The smell's like burning flesh falling from the bone. My skin is smoldering. My flesh is melting. The fat inside my body is bubbling. I'm hurting. I'm crying. I'm dying. My eyes start to turn liquidy inside their so Ugh. My eyes drip down my cheeks. Ugh. Not that I have cheeks anymore. It's slowly like syrup like the, eye, like the whites of overcooked eggs. My right leg doesn't hurt anymore. It's no longer attached to my bo- Oh, God. I no longer have a body, but that's fine. Maybe this is what I wanted all along. 
Oh, jeez. Hey, Lynn, it's been a while since I last saw you in uniform. Oh, hey, hey, Jess. I gave my sister an awkward smile. I don't know. I don't want to smile awkwardly, of course. Who does? But after my dream last night, it's a little hard to act completely natural. You all right? You look kind of pale. I'm fine. I'll live. You sure? Jess smirks and takes a bite of a toast. She smeared with strawberry jam. Bright red against the brown toast makes me think not of blood, but something far more sinister. Charred flesh. A thick smell of freshly toasted bread that lingers in the kitchen doesn't help. Here's a tip top from here, here's a tip top from a girl who failed all of her G GCSEs. Don't pass out in exam hall. I won't. That's right. They all say. That's what they all say. There's always one kind of uh, one kid who passes out every year. Always. Is that true? I mean, it happened in my school year. There was a kid who passed out on the math exams. I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was pretty funny, honestly. Hmm. I think Jess is trying to lighten the mood, but she's not exactly filling me in with confidence. Funny thing is, he wasn't stupid kidding. Not like me. He was smart. He studied a lot. Maybe that's why. Jess ponders her lips are encrusted with a fine film of toast crumbs. Maybe, maybe smart kids put too much pressure on themselves. When they don't do as well as they want it, they freak out. As for me, Jess shrugs and smiles. I know I was going to fail everything, so I never really bothered. You know what? If that's not me, I don't know what is. It didn't seem like there were was any point in worrying. Even though dad kept pushing you? Even so, I know what my limits are. Maybe you just didn't try hard enough. I didn't try at all. Same. Shouldn't sound so cheerful about it. I know, I know. It pisses dad off too. I can see why, but well. Dad works in construction and mom works at a checkout. We don't come from a smart family. I'm not a smart girl. I have no illusions of greatness. That's why dad wants you to, wants us to succeed. Well, I'm pretty happy living my life without amounting to anything. Thank you very much. You know what? Jazz is like me on a spiritual level. What about society? Society? What have they done for me recently? Jess laughs. Fuck it all. Doesn't matter. Jess sounds proud. She's so... She's so she sounds proud about everything, even the things she probably shouldn't be proud about. Dad tells Jess she should be ashamed of herself. She isn't though. Jess is stronger than that. Jess always says that she doesn't have a single ounce of shame in her body. Maybe that's a good thing. It means she doesn't have to worry. Not like me. I worry about everything. I can't drop the ball on this one, Lynn. Go and make dad proud and don't pass out. FYI, that kind of fucks up your chances. I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. I peer into the bread bin even though I don't want any toast. I'm worried if I have any breakfast I'll throw up in the train. Vomiting all over a young child would be far, far worse than <laughs> knocking into them with my school bag. You know, this is true. It doesn't matter anyway. The only crust left. Invigilator? Alright, you may pick up your pens and pencils, and open your papers. Your exams now begin. I flurry th a flurry of noises surrounds me. Hundreds, I think. There are around of 200 kids in my year of math exam papers are opening up and smoothed out by manicured fingers and bitten nails alike. I'm a little slower to start than the rest of my peers. I jolt. It feels like a screwdriver has been inserted into the base of my neck. What am I doing? I'm doing nothing. I'm sitting here staring dumbly at the clock mounted on the wall. Our school is a little outdated. We do our exams in the old gym hall that hasn't been refurbished since 1980. It smells like of old dust and old sweat. The windows are small and high up. They only let into the barest maximum of light. I feel like I'm in prison. The prison filled the rows upon rows of desks and chairs. 
with other people with over 200 teenage boys and girls pouring over the, their math exams I was entered the, for the high higher tier paper I should have been doing foundation teachers had too many expectations I think he was surprised when, on by my dad's fervent insistence during parents evening that I'm the smart one in the family sometimes in a few practice papers I did in class I managed to get B's sometime meaning once the rest of the time they got C's or D's Susie's in the second set of the maths uh, and though she's hardly ever studying she's never received anything less than a B life isn't fair speaking of Susie her last name is Hastings she's sitting a couple seats away from me I can see her brown pigtails bouncing as she peers through a booklet her pen, overly cute and pale pink, glints beneath the dim lights. She's writing. Only five minutes have elapsed, but it looks like she's finishing the first couple of pages already. Ahem. <clears throat> One of the invigilators clears his throat and shifts suddenly guilty. The invisible screwdriver appeal applies even greater pressure to the base of my neck. Does it look like I'm cheating? I hope it doesn't look like I'm cheating. I open out my exam booklet and stare. Random groups of numbers stare back at me and broken up dotted lines for me to write down my answers. I have to pick up my pen. I have to gather my senses. I have to start writing, but I can't. My brain freezes. The questions near the beginning of the exam paper aren't even that difficult. I've never had any issues with these before. Find the perimeter of this shape. What is the circumference of the circle? Plot the line of best fit. It's not hard. I've answered questions like this before. But I can't now. For some reason, nothing makes sense anymore. Ooh, reaching that 100% mark. My breath catches in my chest. The whole world around me spins. I feel like I might fall from my chairs, but I think acting requires too much energy. All I can do is slump. <laughs> slump. I press one hand against my chest, my fingers are shaking. I'm too anxious to even raise my hand. I don't think I could walk to the toilet even if I did to get permission, which is unlikely. But the head invigilator is pretty scary. I don't want to deal with her. I don't want to deal with any of this. God, but how disappointed will Dad be? They'll all be so disappointed that I turned out to be an idiot. The biggest idiot. Ten years of education for what? I'm wasting it. I can't believe I'm wasting everything. Susie's pale pink pen bobs and catches in the light. When I squint, I can see individual particles of dust swirling in the air. Ten minutes have gone by. I still haven't written anything. Everybody else is writing. I'm not. I can't. Why? I'm reaching for my pen. My palms are slick with sweat, but Lynn's having no problems with her paper. She's in the highest set for maths, and though I've never seen any of her work, I'm sure she's a straight-A student. She's just that sort of girl. I wonder where she is. I glance about the gym serpentistantly. Not because I want to cheat. I'm not brave enough for that. Because I'm curious. We're seated in alphabetical order. My last name was Harper. Lindsay's... Aitken? She'll be farther away from me. Maybe to the right? Ah, uh, there. I can see her. She's pretty far, but I can see her clearly. Her hair falls around her shoulders in shimmering waves. She pauses, her pen still poised in her right hand, and glances upwards. Maybe she's staring out the window. Is she so confident in her abilities that she doesn't need to focus on the exam paper? I don't think that's what it is. I shift and rub my thighs together. I'm sweating. Why is it so hot today? It must be because there are so many sweaty, stinking human bodies crammed together in one room. Interesting that she used the word human. It didn't feel like that hot when I was waiting for the train. Lukewarm more than anything. Nightmare surfaces to my mind once more in uh, alarmingly vivid detail. It gets clearer and clearer and the more I will 
I, I will for it to go away like the spider like the legs of spiders slowly emerging from a sinkhole Lynn's hands against my cheeks her lips against mine then suddenly an intense burning my eyes melting out of my skull I draw in the sharp breath and grit my teeth together I wonder what happens when we hit a hundred I can't focus on my exam paper it's all nonsense to me just numbers that have no meaning and blank spaces to show me working f when I can't work anything at all, at all. I don't understand a thing. All I can do is stare at the back of Lynn's head. Half an hour has elapsed. Oof. Interesting. Lynn is looking back down at her paper. Her slender fingers turn over a new page. Her emotions are so casual, like they almost feel insulting. Is she trying to make me feel bad? No. Probably not. I doubt she even knows I exist. My stomach turns. Ooh, here we go. I hate her. I really, really hate that girl. If only she would disappear, then none of this would be happening. Everything would be so much better if she had never been born. Ooh. Uh, I'm, I'm scared. I'm freaked out. I don't remember closing my exam booklet. I don't remember putting my pen down. Oh shit. I hardly even remember picking up my pen. I don't remember holding my exam booklet in the air for the invigilator to collect it. I don't remember being dismissed from the exam hall. I don't remember collecting my bag from the back of the room. I don't remember ex exiting the school and making my way back to the train station. I must have done because I'm here now. I feel like a large part of my life has been wiped clean away. Did I talk to Susie? I'm sure I did. Or maybe she tried talking to me. I don't remember. She probably wanted to compare answers. Not that she needs to. Susie's far, far smarter than I am. I have no advice to give her. No advice other than don't fuck up like I did. Not writing a single thing in your exam booklet will do that for you. Fuck you up, I mean. Oh well. It's too late to worry about that. The exam's over now. The whole time I stared at the back of Lynn's head, I didn't answer any questions, not one. Dad's going to kill me. He's definitely going to kill me. He won't kill me right away, because he won't find out. But when my results come in and he discovers I got a U on my math exams, he'll flip his lid. He'll be so angry. And it's all my fault. I wonder if he'll be angrier than he was when I learned about Jess's baby. Maybe. Failing one, one exam is potential. Potentially. Just like life changing as having a baby. There's no way I'll be able to make up the grade in my second math paper. Even I got full marks, I'd be lucky to scrap the passing grade. So it's over. I failed math, and now I failed life too. I failed everyone. I'm a failure. But it isn't my failure. It isn't. She's blaming a lot of people for, like, her mistakes. I glance at an electronic signboard. I don't see- oh, shit. But I don't see it. All of a sudden, the station looks rather different. It isn't the same station I usually stand at, waiting for the train to take me back home. There's no pedestrians, no vending machines, no board displaying in the next trains. The tracks are old and rusted. They're overgrown with moss and stinging needles. Everything is dark gray and dreary this place looks like it hasn't been used in a very long long time it's derelict all but deserted i'm the only person here am i still in london am i dreaming maybe i'm still in the exam hall maybe i passed out during my exam this is another dream but it, if it is a dream then why does it feel so real the air smells stale the dark is the sky is dark gray and the clouds are light gray. The ground and the grass that grows upwards through the ground, all black as pitch. The whole world begins to distort. I hold my head a hand against my eyes, they're burning. I'm burning. It's just like one of my dreams. Nightmares I mean. I only ever seem to have nightmares. This is a strange, bizarre, surreal world, anything can happen. Fish could swim in the air, birds can fly in the water, the days could reverse and tomorrow would be yesterday. There's no concept of time, but my heart continues to pound inside my chest, my lungs continue to take in oxygen. 
A fine sheen of, of rain begins to fall from the sky. It's almost like the world is crying. There's far too poetic a notion for your, for a young, stupid girl like me. Girls like me who can't answer a single question on their maths, GCSE paper don't deserve to think such financial f things. The train stations, however, is certainly fanciful enough. Is this my own world? Am I the only person here? Um, excuse me. You're in my class, right? No, I'm not alone. Of course I'm not. Even in my own delusions, I can't be in my own. I can never be on my own. You're going back to Strawberry Hill, aren't you? Her inquiry is so polite, but it doesn't make but it makes me grit my teeth together. It feels like she's looking down on me. Do you know if any trains are running? Um This is all so strange. There's nobody else here, so I was wondering if you knew what was going on. Why is she act asking me this? Do I look like I would know? I don't know anything. Maybe behind her innocent facade, she's mocking me, just like everybody else. She's mocking me because I'm not her. I'm just me. Plain Boeing Lynn. It's so interesting how she's blaming other people for things that don't even make sense. Not Lynn with an E. She isn't me. I wish I was her. Maybe she was me. That we were the same, but we're not. We can't be. Um, excuse me, Lynn? I don't think he's ever addressed mine before. Maybe that's why she sounds so hesitant, or maybe it's because of the expression on my face. I don't know what my own face looks like, but it's probably quite scary. Lynn, are you by any chance feeling sick? I am sick. I'm sick of her. Lynn? She extends her art arm out slowly. Is she going to touch me? My body shivers. I want her to touch me. But at the same time, I don't. I can't let her. So I take a step backwards. Disgusting. I excuse me? Didn't you hear me? You're disgusting. Oh, man. What is going on? Oh, no. I push her away hard. I push her so hard, in fact, she stumbles. Her eyes widen in surprise. Uh oh She falls backwards. Her behind hits the ground with a soft thud. She blinks up at me, anxious and unsure and afraid. Yes, she should be afraid. I'm the one with power here. I don't usually have power in my dreams, but I do know. I would be foolish if I did not use it, right? I kneel down, straddling Lynn's chest. My thighs pin her loop, limp body, both sides. I need to block off her escape routes. Even if she tried to throw me off, I don't think she could. Her arms are white as chalk. Her arms are white as chalk, skinny like twigs, and she doesn't have enough power to push me away. I won't let her push me away. You, why? Why should I need to answer her? I don't need to answer her. Shut up. I slap her across the face. Her head jerks in one side and sickening smack. In a few moments, I would... I worry I might have shattered her skull. Is she really that fragile? Of course she is. I'm fragile too. Maybe all the people here are, to a certain extent, even people like Dad. But I'm not, sh I'm not the same as Lynn. We can't be. Then why are you doing this? Lynn blinks at me. Her eyes are filled with tears. A dark, deep, purplish bruise blossoms across her cheek like a rare flower. It's almost pretty. Not pretty enough. I want to hurt her more. Much, much more. I'm tired. I'm tired of being the one who gets hurt all the time. I slap her again and again and again, each time her head jerks obliquely. She's so easy to play with and fun, too, like a doll. She's an incredibly lifelike, life size doll with teeth that rattle around her skull and when I hit her. I, I, I know we're not close, but I didn't think you'd dislike me this much. Did I do something wrong? If you ever, if you even have to ask, that shows you don't understand. What? You don't understand. You've never ha you've tried to understand. But we, we, you've never even spoken. Her voice is muffled through her sobs. The sound ma makes my head hurt. 
An invisible screwdriver is back. It bores into the base of my neck with frightening precision. I need her to stop talking. How do I make her stop talking? That's enough. I don't want to hear your voice anymore. You need to atone. Atone for what? For what, indeed. What did she do? She didn't do anything. But she needs to be punished. She's making me doubt myself. I can't do that. I start to doubt myself. Who else can I blame for my faults and flails? I don't have anybody else. I can take this out on. And nobody will listen. Nobody will understand. It doesn't make sense, even to me. Of course it doesn't make sense to her. That's why she can't talk. She absolutely, definitely can't. If she talks too much, I'll start realizing how stupid this all is. I'll realize just how hollow and empty I am. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I've always hated you. But why? Listen, there is no reason. No logical reason, anyway. It's because you look just like me. What? You look like me, but you're better than me. You've been in each and every way. Her name is even longer than mine, or than E. You'd earn more points if you played Scrabble board. Not that names are allowed. It's against the rules to play names in Scrabble, strictly speaking. But that's never stopped Jas before. Jas has no shame. I have too much. Apparently, when I touch myself, I pull stupid faces. I'm an idiot schoolgirl who doesn't know what she's doing, but it doesn't really matter because no man will ever find attractive anyway. No woman either. What about Lynn? I wish she doesn't pull stupid faces. She's probably better at making herself feel good than I am. Why is this something you're thinking about? She'll be... She beat me at everything. It's simply being being alive. There's only one solution then. Disappear. Just disappear. Go away. Go away. Go away. I grab a hold of my her shoulders tight. My fingers dig into her flesh. She whimpers. It's not enough. I slam her head against the cold, hard floor over and over again. I slam it hard with more strength than I know I possess. Her skull cracks, maybe it fractures, maybe it breaks. Maybe holes are opening inside her head and brain starts to leak out. What the fuck? What the fuck? I wonder what brains look like. I've never seen them before. Are they gray? In biology books, it said when I was a kid, brains are always bright pink. I'm not stupid enough to believe that that's really true. Just what is true anyway? Is this real? None of it. It feels very real. None of it. Except the six smacks of Lynn's head against the concrete floor. What the fuck is going on? The water falls around me. It's almost like a sky is crying. Lynn is crying too. Her noises are running. Her pretty face is covered in red and blue and purple bruises. She's bleeding. She's leaking. But she's still alive. Her body twitches. Her breath forces its way out into, my, into her lungs slowly. In and out. In and out. She's so persistent. Just disappear. Go away. Leave me in peace. Doesn't she know what happens to witches? That's right. She's a witch. She's a witch who stole what she be, should be mean. She has nothing. She has everything. That's fundamentally unfair. She deserves to be punished. Lynn, why? She looks at me. Her, her eyes are glassy. They swim with tears. She's so wet, you could probably stick a goldfish or two in one of her eye sockets. I bet it would be able to bob along quite happily. That is it. If goldfish are, are salty water fish, I'm not sure. I'm not smart. I'm smart enough to know the answer to her question. I have to hurt her. She has to suffer. That's just the way the, of the world. All because I'm not you. And I wrap my fingers around her throat. Oh my god. Who? what the hell? Oh my god. This game. Okay. This game is one hell of a roller coaster. From start to end, I didn't expect it to be this, like, shocking. Like, it's it's a story of teens, like, teen life, but twisted onto its head. Like, 
there's subject matter that everyone deals with, but not to this extent. Ooh. But uh, overall, was, I liked it. Like I liked the story, but where about it does it have to take a turn like that? Like you see, this character's stress continue to go up throughout the whole game, and this constant problem of her hating someone she's never even like consulted with. But, oh my god, was that a ride? Well, that was Lynn. Uh, it's free on Steam if you want to experience it for yourself. Because this was a complete roller coaster, but I highly recommend playing this game. It, it's great. It's a great visual novel. Um, it's not what I expected going into it. I expected uh, there to be more horror elements thrown into it because that's what I came for this game for. I expected like horror, not not vivid dreams and teenage life. But I am glad I played it because who that was that was definitely a ride. But anyways, my name is Hyling J, and thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe to my videos. Hit the bell button to get notified when I post a new episode. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will definitely see you guys in the next video.